The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, has hailed his country's relations with China as amazing. Speaking in the presence of a delegation from Beijing, he portrayed the two countries as putting up a united front against a Western-based world order. But how even is the so-called no-limits relationship? It's the eighth Eastern Economic Forum. Russian President Vladimir Putin warms to one of his favorite themes, criticizing the West. Just like today, the West is trying to restrain China's development because they see that China is developing by leaps and bounds under the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party, under the leadership of our friend and the President of the People's Republic of China. It shocks them. They are doing everything to slow down the development of China. It will not be possible to do this. They are too late. That's it. The train has left. Putin's praise for China is a stark demonstration of the deepening ties between two global powers, who have increasingly relied on each other to stay afloat economically, amid deteriorating relationships with Western countries. Since invading Ukraine, Russia has significantly hiked energy exports to China. Russia's state-owned energy giant, Gazprom, set a record for daily natural gas shipments to China and is now finalizing the design for a new pipeline to run from Russia to China through Mongolia. The increase in Russian gas and oil exports, as well as metals and agricultural products, have helped the Kremlin as well as China's growing economy. China is increasing sales of consumer electronics and passenger vehicles in Russia. Four of the ten best-selling car brands in Russia are Chinese, and Chinese smartphones now account for 75 percent of the Russian market. I can only say that Russia and China have reached an unprecedented level in our relations in recent years. This applies to all areas where we interact. Mutual trade is expected to surpass $200 billion this year. Well, let's speak to our resident China analyst Clifford Coonan on this. Uh, Clifford, so how exactly are Beijing and Moscow cooperating economically now? Well, Rob, let me um, first of all cast your mind back to March when Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin met in Moscow. And um, she pulled Putin close and said, you know, we are making changes now, the like of which had not been seen for 100 years, and we are the ones driving this change. So there's a lot of closeness there. And how that translates economically, we've seen some of the examples in the report there of how consumer goods and, uh, you know, iPhones and cars, also with cars, they're going to start producing cars locally in Russia. So there's going to be tighter economic links there. Um, Russia is selling natural gas to China at almost a 50% discount compared to European buyers. Um, we've got defence, of course. This is the big fear that everyone has, is that the defence ties are going to get closer. So definitely they're, they're, getting, they're, they're getting very tight economically as well as politically. But they're very different countries, Russia and China. Russia is obviously very reliant on exporting its natural resources but, and little else, really. So how even can a Chinese-Russian relationship ever actually be? Well, I think you see it in the language a bit, you know, that the way the Russians are, are constantly pushing how close the relationship is and the Chinese are saying, yeah, well, absolutely, we are close, but they're, <laughs> they're not being quite as fulsome about it. Um, I mean, China is the world's second biggest economy and Russia's economy is probably around 10th in the world. It's a bit smaller than Italy. So um, they're, they're, they're not equal in, in economic terms. What Russia has is influence and nuclear weapons and it's also a potential ally. We've seen uh, the growing closeness closeness politically, which is very important in economic terms because we're looking at things like BRICS, which is, has a very strong economic dimension, this grouping of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, which has been expanded recently. And we also saw that China didn't go to the G20 just as Russia didn't go to the G20. Um, you know, so we're seeing a lot of these closeness, this relationship, even though it's not even, it's still extremely important because it gives, um, it gives legitimacy to, to this grouping of nations. But if you want to deal with Russia, you also have to reckon with the fact that it's under all manner of international sanctions. So what impact are the sanctions on Russia having or going to have on China? 
Well, I mean, I think this, it's a, del a delicate balancing act for, for China. Um, it doesn't want, in some ways, sanctions are kind of contagious, that if you basically, um, if, if they start giving weapons or chips that can be used in weapons uh, to Russia, then China could also face um, sanctions from the US, more sanctions from the US or more trade restrictions than already exist. So it does need to make sure that that doesn't happen and it wants to keep, um, to, to make sure that that, that um, tech balance is there. Um, but at the same time, um, we also need to make, you know, keep an eye on the fact that maybe this relationship could crash because they are also, even though they're close, they're also, uh, they're also possibly, um, they also have a, a history of, of um, clashing. So we have... Yeah, um, they share, I mean, they share a border and there, there's some dispute over what's going on there, isn't there? Yeah, so it's an extremely complex picture, I think, the relationship between the two. Economically, it's definitely very important for Russia, however, to make sure that this relationship expands and flourishes. Okay, Clifford Coonan, our resident China watcher. Thank you very much for keeping us up to date.